So it seems that I have to restart the notebook. Mm. I reload all the all the data files, all the so if if it still works for you, so you don't have to reload everything. But I have to reload all all the data for some reason. So so I have been told that uh, so all your works, all your notebooks run on, run on, a, run on a big server in, uh, in DK uh, is it. Um, um, but um, uh, but we are only have something. We don't have much uh, RAM anymore left. So it's quite. Uh, I think it's quite likely that. Uh, Will not do everybody the diva analysis, um, so so it's quite likely that we we will run out of uh, RAM space. So <clears throat> I'm reloading all the uh, all the observations. This can take some some minutes. Um, so where we have been. So So do we Charles do we need to edit the mask or can we just use the default mask? We use the default. Yeah, okay. But maybe we would have to change uh, the cell of the three D. Yeah, okay. So for for me it's still still running. But now what you already can do if you uh, if it's already available for you. So for me, it's running because I have here this uh, this message kernel buzzy, uh, buzzy. And so if it's uh, available for you, let's try to select. Let's try to make a range check on salinity. So the values of salinity that, that we have seen were quite reasonable, but let's let's assume that we make a more strict range checking, so that we only want to have salinity between 25 and 39 PSU, okay? So let's define a vector cell, yeah, which is contains true or false, depending if the corresponding element in the uh, ops val will be between, will be um, higher than 25 PSU and smaller than uh, 39 PSU. Okay, so this is something that, that you can try. So as a reminder, to compare, you use uh, this means uh, smaller, this means larger, yeah. And if you want to do an element-wise compar comparison, so we want to compare every element of OPSVAL, we should use something like this. OPSVAL every element uh, say larger than 25 okay that would be one one thing to do okay and uh, and something nice about Julia is that you can also make a chain this comparison operator so do you want to know if 3 is between uh, one and four. Yeah, this is true. Okay, so 
Um, but now if you have arrays, let's say you have an array of values. So, oops. Still looking. Okay. This doesn't work like this because we have to put dots here in order to specify that this comparison is element by element. Okay. This would give true for the first value because 3 is indeed between 1 and 4 and false for the second value because 7 is not between 1 and 4. Okay. So now the exercise is to define cell, the variable cell for selection. Um, so that we have only uh, the value choose if, uh, if the measurement is between 25 and, and uh, uh, 39. Okay. So, in fact, it's the same thing as, as here before. 25 smaller than opsval. Okay. Okay. So if you want to see all the screen output, we can put a semicolon here. Okay. And this. So if previously Opsval S. Uh, about uh, 140, uh, 43,000, no, about uh, 1 million, 1.4 million values. So after this, now uh, we execute this cell, and then after this, it will have probably less. Yeah, it will have about 700, uh, the vector will be about 700 values shorter because there are some values that we excluded. Okay. Is this okay so far? Um, so now the next step is to uh, um, is to define the correlation lengths and the uh, uh, and the error of the observations, the relative error of the observations. So, if the correlation length is just constant, yeah, it can just be a number. Yeah? And so here it could be could have been written simpler, but sometimes the correlation length depends uh, on space, so it is it is actually an array. And so here. What we do here, I right, split this cell. Here we have a fairly small domain, so we have just uh, uh, 96 by 57 horizontal um, grid points and three vertical layers. Yeah? And we are now creating arrays, uh, len x, len y, len z which have uh, this dimension, but only constant values, okay? okay? So if you have any questions or if you have any, maybe, error message, just let me know, <coughs> okay? And now the, um, and we can check, so the size of len z is indeed an array of this size and all values so this is one the first value would be uh, 100 thousand meters yeah uh, 100 kilometers more or less one art degree Okay, so then let's create the variable name. 
the uh, sorry the file name for the results. So the file name would just be named like the uh, like the verb like the name of the verb. So water body salinity, but we replaced uh, every space by an underscore. It's maybe easier to deal with files where you don't have spaces in the name. Okay. And then something which is quite important when you publish the data is also to uh, 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 take care about metadata. So here in the CDataNet and CData Cloud projects, uh, um, have several vocabularies, several lists of metadata that we're using here, like, um, like we're using the ETMO code, which is a number given to uh, to institution. You can give here your email address, the source of the data, any comment, any additional comment, uh, and um, the code identifying the uh, the parameter. Uh, also, there's also well, different codes are used for identify the aggregated parameter, the parameter when you search for something, and also. The, uh, uh, the code defined for the area. So in this case we use the uh, Adriatic and here we should use the, the corresponding code for the Ad Adriatic Sea. Okay. And uh, you can also give a code to the product itself. But I think that's not very very important all this. Okay. So we, uh, we run this cell And then we run this one. Uh, this this function will then connect to the uh, metadata server of uh, CData Clouds and then collect some additional information. Yeah. So we just specifying here the metadata code, and then it will connect to the to the uh, metadata server to get some additional information, so that we can have a, a netcdf file with um, with a lot of uh, um, attributes, with several attributes reflecting the uh, um, the file that we uh, the analysis that we do. So if the file already the div and SDF file already exists, we will remove it. Yeah. We are creating some some uh, a directory for for the plots. Okay. And so, um, and also something which is quite interesting, it's, uh, in this case, well, sometimes running Diva can take uh, quite a long time. So if you're using various different depth levels, different time instances, it can, uh, can run uh, for several hours. And so it is uh, quite useful to have a look uh, what, where is Diva up to and what it's doing. So there's a function which is called plots res, which plots the results uh, that Diva already computed. Okay. So this function you don't need to, to change. Maybe I will just uh, remove this parameter. It makes the plots a bit bigger. Okay. Okay. So, um, was everybody able to do this up to this point? Yeah, or do you have any questions? Yeah? There was a construct in the, the window with the replace function. Yeah? This this one this you have yeah, yeah. ah this is something I, I indeed we, we did not uh, mention but uh, it is some nice things so if if you have a variable with a value of three for instance yeah and you want to use this variable inside of a string yeah you would um, first need to convert it I think it's lowercase string. 
you would need to convert it to a string and then you can concatenate it with, uh, with something if you want to put an extension of nc Quotes, double quotes. Okay. So this takes a variable my var, turns into a string, and adds a dot and c at the end. Okay. This is a bit verbose, and something to um, a simpler way to do it would be just to write something like this. My bar dot c. Okay, so if you have a dollar sign here, it means that what follows is uh, is a variable, and you should substitute uh, the uh, the variable in between. Okay, and and this um, can be a, a can be just variables, but also the result of functions. Yeah. But then it's, you should use uh, parentheses in order to make clear uh, where uh, where it starts and where it ends. Okay. I was actually wondering about the other, but, yeah. Okay, and but the input to the replace function is actually uh, here. Ah, okay, 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 okay. So, uh, I'll just copy. Okay. Okay. So here, so if you have something, um, so if you have a, a string with spaces, yeah, uh, this replace function takes this string, and this is something that we have seen before also with dictionary. So this is uh, what's, uh, what Julia is called a pair. It's just an association between two different things, and you want to replace every, every space by an underscore. But is that a variable in something? Yeah, yeah. So this is... When you define the So this this is uh, the type of this is pair. This is a, a data structure that we didn't talk about, but it's a, it's a really special data type, and it says it associates uh, a string to a string. So it's mainly used for dictionaries or in special cases like like here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions so far? Okay, well, probably we'll now get to the point where we break the system. Unfortunately, sorry, Merit. <laughs> so, um, so we have defined everything, and now we are able to run the diva analysis. So this is this cell, and and so maybe we do it sequentially. Yeah, okay. So let me start. Oh no, I don't have everything defined. Ah, too bad. I don't have bus name, so there may be some thing that I did not define before. Here. So I, I probably forgot to run this. Bus name is defined. Mask is not defined indeed. Thank you about this. So we did not edit the mask, so you can simply remove this line. Okay. So this line, mask edits, is not defined, so you can you can remove it. But sometimes, uh, as we have shown before, it's um, it is used to uh, to change the Lancy mask. 
for instance, if you're doing a climatology of, uh, of the uh, Mediterranean Sea, you would probably have also some, uh, some values in your area which are related to the Atlantic or to the Black Sea. And if you are just focusing on the Mediterranean Sea, you want to exclude those. And this is uh, a place where you would use uh, um, exclude this, where you would edit the mask. Okay, I don't think it, we need it here now. Uh, I set this one to this one to one to make it a bit uh, faster, uh, and then I run the diva resonance. Okay. So what's diva now doing? It's uh, um, so it's creating the cost function that we have seen at the very very beginning. Yeah. So the cost function. Uh, which penalize the difference relative to the data and also penalizes abrupt variations. Yeah. Uh, this cost function is uh, represented as a, um, using sparse matrices, so as, as a linear system. And then it has to solve this, this linear system. Yeah. And this is a step which takes the most, uh, uh, the most run. And uh, I think it's quite likely that that uh, uh, we will not have all. Everybody will not have the same. Uh, uh, will not have enough room for everybody to, to run this step. Unfortunately. Okay. So now it is running. So now it's really an excellent time for question. Maybe you can show a picture without generating. Mm -hmm. Ah. Okay. So not yet, not yet. Do you mean the one in the end? So I think we're just making one time slice, so we just have one one picture. Okay. I'll be not defined. What's going on? Mm. Ah, okay. Now oh. I forgot something. So sorry. So this. So I forgot to define B. So this is what is here. The plots I don't need. Need them. Okay, but it was about to make a first plot. That's good. Good sign. Somewhere. So let me just skip this. Yeah, no, sorry. So we, we did not do all the stuff of defining everything. Yeah, so can you also exclude, uh, comment out this line about the aspect ratio? Yeah, so we'd have an aspect ratio which is a bit off, but it's. Uh, so comment this line and then re-execute the cell, okay? Okay, so everybody found the line that we should need to comment out. So inside the function plot res, so the error message was aspect ratio is not defined because we, we simplified the notebook a bit and did not all make all plots, so we did not define this variable. Okay, so to make it simple, we just comment this out. Yeah? So inside the function plot res, there is a line set aspect ratio. We put a out sign before. It means that don't ignore this line. And then we have to hit Control Enter or just Run to uh, to update this function. Okay. Okay. Okay, so here it was quite fast because it was really, uh, really small domain and uh, and with very few uh, few observations. Okay, and then um, so now other people can try to run this command as well and just maybe raise your hand if it worked or 
raise the hand if it does, didn't work. So, so don't forget to comment out this line. And with NC data set, we can Yeah, oh, great. <laughs> yeah, well, this is a small example. It's luckily a small example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, with uh, with data set, we can have a small list of things which are defined inside this netcdf file. So we have uh, just uh, six uh, sixty nine points in longitude, fifty seven points in latitude. So it's a fairly coarse resolution. Only three depth levels one time instance and so and then this is a fairly standard NCDF file where you have a different variables to find with longitude, latitude, depth, so the coordinates of all these uh, um, grid points, the time and then the salinity itself. Okay. So everybody was able to, to run Diva 3D and and have a first look to the NetCDF file. Okay, so we might um, plot the NetCDF file. So. We open the netcdf file. Um, and then just load single variable, the salinity. So we're getting all points in longitude latitude and this is written by column by this double point and just the first depth level. So Something um, so this syntax means that from the data set in the in the NetCDF file, we're getting the variable salinity and just loading one slice of it, one uh, depth and time slice. And the no missing function is there to replace all missing values by none. Okay, because in the NetCDF file you can have missing values uh, or fill values, and these typically denote um, um, land points. And here with no missing, we're just replacing them by now. Okay. And I close the data set. So did this work? Okay, let's have a look to the size. Okay. And make a first plot. So don't 
Um, don't be surprised, it will be a fairly coarse resolution. Okay. But at least we can recognize a geotic C. So typically what we have here is the adriatic the uh, the salinity surface salinity of the adriatic sea and um, so we have also values here but we don't have any observations here so this is just uh, essentially just uh, the mean that we have here this would be something typically to to mask out so um, but okay uh, so can you I propose that you can try do the same thing. So load the first time slice or any other time slice and then make just a, a plot of the surface salinity. Okay. And this is essentially the most thing that we want to, to talk about. Um, the last step is that we can also save the uh, uh, the locations of the observations that were used. Oh no. Oh, I, this didn't work because I, I opened it. It's a file. Okay. Um, so, Julia, you cannot open a file two times. So, I opened it here, but I didn't close it. So, that's, uh, that, that's why I got some error. Uh, so, if I re just redo it here and recreate the file. And then it should be really fast. And then I can save things in the NetCDF file. Okay. Okay. So in this step, we adding to the NetCDF file some uh, some information about um, um, about the observation that we used in the data set. This helps us a bit uh, to, uh, to, in, to, uh, to have a better chain of traceability, what was used to make given climatologies, uh, climatology and so on. Okay. Okay. So, um, so were you able to, to run Diva3D? Or who, who was not able to run Diva3D? Ah, okay. Okay, we'll come to you. And so the others can uh, can try to uh, uh, to plot a slice of the NetCDF file. And uh, while we are doing this, uh, or maybe they can also change different parameters. They can, for instance, make it uh, finer, increase the resolution, maybe change the correlation length, and see how it uh, how the results uh, affect. The, uh, the, um, the final output, okay? Okay. So, um, um, so one of the problems that we uh, have seen it can be a, a, a pitfall in in, in Julia. If um, so, if you want to have the size of a, of a variable, yeah, you can. You, Call the variable. You call the function size, but if if you would declare 
uh, if you would declare um, um, a variable which has the same name as size, then it would shadow the uh, uh, the Julia function. So don't don't run this, but it it will uh, uh, will would, would create uh, errors later on because every time you will call the function size, it will think that you're using the variable size and no longer the uh, function size. Okay, so um, that was just one one issue that we encountered. Um, so I think we have just um, five minutes left. So if you have some questions about uh, what we have seen so far, or some general remarks, or uh, so indeed we did not crash the system, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, we were using fairly uh, low, modest resolution. So. But uh, be aware that when you increase the uh, resolution, you would also increase the demand in, in RAM. And so, uh, but we did not reach the limit so far in this, this test, okay? So, <laughs> we shall try? I will try later, Richard. <laughs> so, um, do you have any, uh, any questions? Okay, so we'll be around for today, so if you have any questions later on, don't hesitate to ask us, or even per email if you prefer. And, um, and so, that's, that's all for us, we're having a bit of, finishing a bit ahead of time. So I think the, uh, the, next, um, the next lesson will start in five minutes, so you can breathe a bit. <laughs> okay.